So let's start with the theoretical basis, which is the second topic currently in the engineering block we were bringing before for chemical engineers. We're going to cover mass balances, energy balances, thermodynamics, physical chemistry, and transport phenomena. In this section or video, we're going to take care about mass balance. What's mass balance? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you one image or one picture here before the description of what the smart balance is and why do we need it. So first, maybe you want to pause, check out it. And you know, once you analyze, try to guess what is the importance of mass balance. So you can see there are methanol oil going in. We have quantities of mass per unit time, they go to this place right here, apparently they go then here, something goes separated and goes back here, another thing goes here, there's a lot of glycerin, so definitely there's a reaction here, actually it's a trans esterification. So you can see the number of how much stuff is going through almost all the streams, so fatty alcohol and so on. So yeah, you get it. Probably you guessed it right, mass balance is how much material we're getting in, how much intermediate material goes out, and how much product material goes in the final stream. So it's the very basic of chemical engineering. You want to know how much goes in, how much goes out. We are right now not interested on how does that happen, how does that separation happen, or how does that reaction happen. We don't care, we're going to consider this as a black box. Something magical happens and it goes out. So it's pretty good because we're not only interested in this, we're going to be presented to what is a process, chemical process, and unit variables such as pressure, temperature, levels, flow rates, etc., volumetric flow rates. We talk about steady state and unsteady state. A steady state is, well, mainly when we have continuous flows such as this here, 10 kilograms per minute maybe, and this is, contain this is always the same, the temperature of the tower is the same, the pressure is the same, the outlet streams are also the same. So as time passes, there is no change in conditions. Now we have unsteady states in which we actually have time as a very important factor and this is very typical for example in batch distillation we feel it we add heat and eventually starts going out all the vapor and the initial condition was i don't know the level was at one meter final condition is level was at 0 0.5 meter after maybe one minute so you can see there is a change with respect of time in one minute we lower the level here in one minute there is no effect, in 30 minutes the temperature still is the same, the mass flow is the same, so time has no effect here but it does have effect here. Now we are going to see this very important topic which is degrees of freedom and many people don't teach mass balance with degrees of freedom. I actually when I was studying I didn't consider it that important but uh, we're going to cover essentially what's a system or mathematical system and when we can solve it. So we know that if we have this right here, we cannot solve it because we have one equation with two variables. So x can be infinite number of solutions, y can be infinite number of solutions. But if we have maybe I don't know, y equals 3, we have two equations with two variables, we can solve that. Degrees of freedom means 0. Zero means that we don't need to add extra data, and if we take data away, we will have infinite number of solutions. So what will happen if I say x equals 3? I have three equations, which is 1, 2, and 3, and I have two variables. So as you can see, this is not possible. You need to get zero degrees of freedom, and we're going to do that with our mass balances problems. Then we go, after the brief introduction, we start doing some mass balances, simple mass balances, inlet, outlet, uh, accumulation, and so on. Eventually we start with single phase mass balance, 
And when I state single phase, it's because there's only one phase. Either liquid, liquid, or gas, gas, or solid, solid. More typically, liquid, liquid, or gas, gas. For example, combustion is an example. We have, let's say, methane, which is a gas. We're going to add air, which is nitrogen and oxygen. We're going to burn it, and we're going to get out CO2, which is a gas, and water vapor, which is also a gas. So same phase, we're going to do it with one reaction, and eventually we're going to cover multiple reactions. And the problem with multiple reactions is that we need to eventually give the definitions of selectivity and yield. That is, many reactions are going to prefer to react in a certain way. So let's say A plus B equals C. But A plus C equals D. And A plus, let's say, D makes, I don't know, F. So you can see A can choose between all these reactions the way he wants to go. So probably he prefers a lot of these. A plus B goes in C. But the problem with this is that eventually when B goes out, we're going to produce this one. So this is a very interesting topic right here. Then we go for multiple phase mass balance, and as the name implies, we no longer have one phase, we have two. So let's say liquid goes to vapor, or a solid goes to a vapor, and so on. Vaporization will be a good example. We have, I don't know, black box, as I told you, goes in, goes out, vapor, a little bit of vapor goes, and this is liquid. So we have two phases. We also care about humidity and psychometrics. Psychometrics is essentially the study of humidity of the air. So we have, you know, air. And probably you've seen that in the morning you have a lot of little drops. And this is because the air ha is no longer cool enough to have, well, let's say, not hot enough to have those humidity. So when it gets cool, a little bit of water condenses. We're going to see that, of course, in a mass balance course. Also, we're going to see many operations, extraction, distillation, flashing, that needs at least two phases. Or many times even a filter, which is, of course, you know, guys, a solid and a liquid. You pass it through a filter and all the liquid goes away and the solid stays as solid. And eventually we revisit transient state which is essentially the same as unsteady state. Transient state is typically batch processes. So that was the what. What do we see? But probably you're wondering, why do we need this? Well, we need it for balances of material. We want to have our chemical plant, well, in shape. We want to go know how much do we need, how much do we have as a secondary unit, or how to say, a by, a, let's say, a byproduct and we want to know how much is going as a product. So this is good also to state final specifications. If you want a 97%, let's say, gold mixture, and the other should be 3% silver, and we have an, a mixer alloy, well, you need to do a mass balance to know how much gold do you need and how much silver do you need. It's also important for sizing and equipment. It's not the same working with 10 grams per minute than 10 tons per minute. So of course 10 grams per minute maybe is a, let's say a tank, a 10 liter tank, or I don't know. And this will be a huge distillation column. So different sizes, of course. It's also important for price and cost, especially for the calculation of how much is the variable cost, how much do we need as we scale up and this, uh, as at the same time we need this, we will see that sizing increases as we want to scale up. And eventually we need this for the energy balances. You know that energy is everywhere, matter has, or mass has energy, so if you want to do a energy balance, you will need to know how much mass is inside once again, if we want to design a unit operation, we need to know the specification, how much, how big, how large are the flows and uh, essentially flow, volumetric flow rates or mole flow rates or mass flow rates. And, well, of course, 
a plant design. If you don't know how much product you want to produce, you cannot build a plant. So if I tell you, I want to produce beer, well, that's good, awesome. How much do you want to produce? Do you want to produce maybe one batch for chemist, uh, for not chemistry, for Christmas? Or you want to create maybe 10 hectoliters uh, for your bar with friends? Or maybe you want to make this more formal? Maybe you want 10,000 uh, liters for a, I don't know, maybe you want to sell it a distribution center? Or maybe you want to be a beer magnet? So if you don't know how much you need of product, you will not be able to design a plant. And especially for scale up and scale down. It's easier to make a diagram and work the numbers before actually building them. So imagine you just want to produce how much, uh, for instance, you have this example, 10 grams per minute. You want to, you saw the, the pilot plant is fine, everything works as planned, but you don't want 10 grams per minute per minute you want 10 tons per minute so you need to do a scale up and this will definitely help you now guys probably you know if you checked out my content before i got plenty of videos on mass balance and i actually created one online course you can check out what does it include here or maybe just go directly to my mass balance website here's going to be a link if you're interested in learning more, I mean actually learning, probably you are starting your uh, bachelor and you want to improve, you are maybe very, as I was, I was always wanting to practice, 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 because practice is the only way you will actually learn. Or if maybe you are having problems, I will teach you here online. Of course, you have very beautiful theory here and you got practice section, and you got the library with a lot of material, and you can test yourself with qu uh, quizzes. So you can even take a three-day free trial if you want, or even send me an email and tell me that you are very interested, and maybe I can get you one or two coupons for you and your friends. So that's everything, guys. In the next one, we're going to see energy balance, which is, of course, the next class after mass balance. First understand how much mass is going in and out and then we understand how much energy is going in and out and of course how much energy as heat or work we need to add. So guys, thank you for watching the video. See you in the next class.